Hello, my name is Farron Glenfield. I'm the Church of Ireland Bishop of Kilmore, Elfin and Ada. I oversee about a hundred churches in counties like Cavan, Leitrim, Fermanagh, Roscommon, Longford and Sligo. And I live in these beautiful surroundings in Kilmore in County Cavan. Like you, at this time with the coronavirus, there's been so much disruption to our lives. We are not holding any live church services as we are following government and health guidelines. In the next number of weeks and indeed months, we're going to be offering to you, wherever you're from, services that you can join in with and participate and be blessed by. So whether you're living in the United Diocese of Kilmore, Elfin or Arda, or different parts of Ireland, or indeed beyond our shores, we pray that as you join in in these services, which are coming weekly from our churches, we pray that God would bless you and that God will heal and restore our land. God bless. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service of worship uh, this Palm Sunday, the 5th of April. Uh, my name is Ian, and I am the rector in the Baileyborough group of parishes, that is Shercock, Mulla, Knock Bride, and I welcome you here this morning to Baileyborough Parish Church. Wherever you're joining us from, you're very welcome. And if you're joining us from beyond the diocese, uh, you're particularly welcome here this morning. And though we're apart, we continue to worship God together. And though we're rightly socially distancing ourselves from one another, we remember that God is near, God is close, and he holds us in his hands, and his hands are safe. You can follow this morning's liturgy on the screen, uh, you'll also find it in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning at page 101. So let's raise our hearts and voices in worship this morning. And we raise them, of course, to God. We raise our voices and wave with joyful hope the palms of deliverance of God's people. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Our hearts are filled with expectation as we welcome the coming King. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We receive into the crowded streets of our lives the one who is Saviour, not only of us, but of all the earth. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Our opening hymn, which you'll find in the Red Church Hymnal, uh, number 134, make way, make way for Christ the King.
We come to our prayers of confession. You'll find them on page 102 of the Book of Common Prayer, or the words will appear on the screen. It's important that we bring our sins to God and recognize the things that we've done wrong and to ask for his forgiveness and graciously accept his forgiveness. So let us confess our sins to God our Father. And together we pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we come now to our opening reading. This is the first reading from Philippians chapter 2, from verses 5 to 11. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him this name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus very knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue, tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to read Psalm 118 together. You'll find it on page 730 of the Book of Common Prayer, where the words will appear on the screen. We're going to read verses 1 and 2, and then verses 19 to 29. And we'll read it together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim... His mercy endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. 
You are my God and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we come to our second reading. The second reading is Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we're going to sing again hymn number 217 in the church hymnal. O glory, Lord, and honour to thee, Redeemer King.
Reverend Canon Patrick Bamber from Corey Parish in Sligo is going to speak to us from God's Word. A very good morning to you. Allow me to say a brief prayer before I get underway. Living God, thank you so much for your holy written word. Please speak through it to us today. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Do you like dramatic entrances? I mean the way celebrities or national leaders may arrive at an official function. This year's 92nd Academy Awards took place in Hollywood on the 10th of February. There was, as usual, the red carpet arrivals of the great and the good of show business, dressed to the nines and taking their time to be photographed and interviewed. There was a great deal of choreography and planning, little left to chance. After all, reputations and profiles are very important and one must look one's best. Today, on Palm Sunday, we give some thought to another dramatic entrance. What is sometimes called the triumphal entrance of Jesus marks the beginning of Holy Week. Like the Oscars, a great deal of thought was invested in it, but that's about as far as the similarities go because Jesus' entrance could just as well be described as the A-triumphal entrance. This morning's psalm was a favourite of Martin Luther. It's very likely that Jesus himself would have sung it with his disciples along with Psalms 115 to 117, the latter half of the Songs of Hallel after the Last Supper. The words we heard a few moments ago were part of the temple liturgy used to give thanks for God's deliverances in the past and used especially at national feast days. It begins and ends with the words, O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his mercy endures forever. In Philippians chapter 2 we have a remarkable summary of the work of Christ in what may have been an early Christian hymn. Paul introduces it with the words, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. I want to look at both Jesus and the people in the dramatic entrance described for us in Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 11, what Pippa read for us just a few moments ago. So firstly, Jesus. There is no doubt that Jesus carefully planned this. His arrival in Jerusalem took place when perhaps something like two million people were assembled in Jerusalem for the celebration of the greatest feast day of the year, the Passover. You could forget social distancing. Also, his arrival was four days before the day when Passover lambs would have been killed, according to Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. He chose to arrive not on foot, as he did pretty much everywhere else, but riding on the back of a donkey in fulfilment of the prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Previously, Jehu had been greeted as king with garments spread under his feet, and Judas Maccabeus had been welcomed to the liberated city of Jerusalem with palm branches and the singing of psalms in about 173 BC. He didn't discourage the praises and excitement of the people, but Jesus seemed to accept them as if they were his due. He was only arriving openly, not in secret at all, to the capital city of Jerusalem. It was obviously a claim to be king. I've managed not to mention the current crisis. But do you remember what everyone was talking about before? Brexit, of course. One of the big questions that was being asked was this, what kind of Brexit do the people of Britain want? The question for us today is, what kind of king would Jesus be? The answer is, a humble king. The people had heady expectations of a messianic king who would come to rescue them from Roman tyranny and make them once more the head of the nations. But Jesus 
didn't arrive on a war horse like a triumphal Roman general with scores of prisoners and victorious soldiers in attendance. And there was a surprising lack of the trappings of worldly power about him. This was no accident. At his trial a few days later, he would say to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. By which he meant that it was not in any way like the kingdoms of this world, but it's certainly a kingdom that will come on the earth. Jesus came in gentleness and humility, but he will come again in power and with great glory to judge the living and the dead. On the first Palm Sunday, Jesus knew that he had many enemies and that probably many of those celebrating his arrival would later call for his death. But he didn't stop them. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter. On his return, however, as we're told in Philippians chapter 2, the time will come that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So let's think about the people on that first Palm Sunday. It must have been quite a scene. We're told in verse 8 that a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road with others bearing palm branches. And they shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Later, in verse 10, as the residents of the city ask, who is this? It's almost as though the reply from the crowds is like the liturgical Psalm 24. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. What's strange is that they were so right without realising it. It's a feature of our lives that we can sometimes hit exactly the right note, say the right thing and act in the right way without fully realising it. So far, so good. But when Jesus started to challenge the way things were, people were less happy. He cleansed the temple. That's the next act recorded in Matthew's Gospel and acted in a totally different way towards the Romans than the people expected. God gets to the heart of what is the problem, as he did with Pharaoh in ancient Egypt, as our readings last week recorded, and most of all, as he did through Jesus' death on the cross. The challenge for us is this. While we're in church, we may say and do all the right things, and it's a good thing to do that. Affirming our faith in Jesus' right to rule our lives as king, in our songs, even in our prayers, and in the creed. But if he ever dares to challenge us, we, we may take a very different attitude, as though all the fine-sounding words on Sunday are forgotten. Most of the people arriving for the Oscar ceremonies are actors. We are not called to be actors in the Christian faith, but sincere and real. He is, Jesus is the real thing. Thank him for his mercy that still endures. And if you see him as your king, Make sure you have the same humble and courageous attitude that he had, so that our lives will match our lips today and every day. Amen. In response to today's sermon, we're going to come together to sing number eight from Thanks and Praise, and he shall reign forever. His throne and crown shall ever endure. And he shall reign forever. His throne and crown shall ever endure. And he shall reign.
Now, if you turn to page 112 of the Book of Common Prayer, or again, the words will appear on the screen, we're going to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And we pray these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now it's vital at this difficult time in our country and in our world that we remember that no matter how isolated uh, we need to become in the days and weeks and months ahead, we never need to be isolated from God. His kingdom is never in lockdown. It's always open. And so we can always talk to him and pray for one another. And so we come to the prayers of the people. You'll find them on page 112, where the words will appear on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. In the Collect of the Day. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death on the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Collect at Morning Prayer. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Reverend Canon Hazel Hicks is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Good morning. I'm Hazel Hicks. I'm the rector of the Arva Group of Parishes. I have churches in the counties of Cavan, Leitrim and Longford. And this morning I'm reading the prayers for Palm Sunday from my home in the beautiful county of Fermanagh. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the beauty of your creation all around us. Rivers, lakes, mountains, green fields, spring flowers and lambs. They remind us of the hymn, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, the Lord God made them all. Forgive us when we take the beauty of nature for granted. In these days of uncertainty and confusion, the signs of new life give us hope for the future and remind us that despite what we hear on the news, you're at work in the world you created. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for our farming community who provide us with our daily bread. Keep them safe and be their ever-present help in the difficult times. Give them the right weather conditions in each season. 
Help us to respect and appreciate our farmers and keep us from demanding cheap food so that farmers can get a fair price for their produce. We pray for farmers around the world where there is little rain or too much rain or where the soil is poor. Open our hearts so that we are generous in sharing what we have with those who are hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our rock in times of trouble. In the midst of the uncertainties, anxieties and fears, with all that is going on around us due to the coronavirus, we cry out to you for people who suffer, for those who are sick, families who have lost loved ones, healthcare staff who are overworked, folk whose treatment or operations have been delayed due to the crisis, people in isolation and those who are truly alone, families who are struggling financially, people who are homeless and those who are suffering abuse in these difficult times. Lord, heal and protect them. Give them comfort and strength and help them to know that all through the storm, your love is the anchor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we give thanks for the many people who are using their gifts and skills to serve you and care for others in these uncertain times. We ask for your blessing on the shops who provide our food, pharmacies and health centres, transport workers, the emergency services, companies who supply us with gas, electricity and water, and all whose work is essential. Help us to value and respect them as they work to provide for us and to only purchase what we need so that the essential goods can be shared out fairly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wise and faithful God, at this time of national crisis, we pray for the government, those who lead and all who make difficult decisions for our health and safety. With so much chaos, it's hard to see beyond our own needs. But we also pray for world leaders, that they will work together to fight the coronavirus and make decisions that are fair and just for their people. We know that none of us will be safe until all of us are safe. So we especially pray for refugees, displaced people and people in war zones. Those countries where there is poor sanitation, little medication and a lack of nutritious food. God of compassion, we pray for strength, hope and practical help for these people who are particularly vulnerable and all who are working to relieve suffering, to provide food and shelter, as well as dealing with this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The psalm which brings hope and comfort to many of us. As our church buildings are closed, remind us that the church is your people. Bless Bishop Fern and thank you for all who shepherd our churches in the Diocese of Kilmore, Elfin and Arda. Guide them as they find new ways of doing church in these strange times. Inspire and energise all church leaders as they find innovative ways to bring the good news of the gospel to people of all ages and in all places. Keep them faithful in prayer and service. We pray for each family in our diocese and we place our children and young people into your hands, Lord, as they are homeschooled, they miss their friends and activities, give parents the skills and patience they need and may families enjoy time together. Open the hearts of every parishioner so that they see the need to turn to you, their good shepherd. And we pray that they will live in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a few moments of silence, let us bring to God the people, 
and the situations that God has placed on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, on this Palm Sunday, as we think about Jesus humbly riding into Jerusalem on a young donkey and the crowd shouting Hosanna, we remember that the same crowds days later were shouting for him to be crucified. As we travel through this Holy Week, remind us of Jesus' journey to the cross, where he went so that our sins could be forgiven. Keep us focused on the hope and victory of the resurrection and the fact that Jesus truly is the King of Kings. With so many events cancelled due to COVID-19, Easter and the joy of the resurrection is not cancelled. We have the sure and certain hope of our risen Lord and everlasting life to keep us strong and faithful. Thank you, risen Lord, that your ways are greater than our ways, your thoughts deeper than our thoughts. Thank you for grace and love and that you make all things new. Thank you that you hear our prayers and know our hearts. Thank you that you don't just show us the way, you are the way. May we follow you with hosannas in our heart, not just today, but every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we join in the prayer our Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 238 in the red hymnal, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. close this morning 
Uh, we're going to join together in the diocesan 2020 prayer and the words will appear again on the screen let us pray heavenly father we want to catch your vision for these dioceses and for our parishes but to catch your vision we first need to listen to you too often we leave you out forgive us help us to catch a sense of where your spirit is leading give us courage to love and serve you Give us boldness to proclaim Christ faithfully and to build your kingdom. Lord, come to us. Our door is open. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us in worship this morning. We pray that in these unsettling and uncertain times, as Christ's followers, we'll have confidence in his triumph over sin and death, and that steady assurance that his unbreakable, unshakable love and mercy go with us wherever we go. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.